الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وهو سي وآله وصحبه his family and his companion those who accepted him immediately those who were, they were with him صلى الله عليه وسلم from the beginning till the last minute the lucky one the chosen one yeah Allah called them السابقون السابقون the elite the forefront those who are become, you know, another ayah says مقربون they will be brought so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us in the company in Jannah and they made mistakes they made tawbah they were not perfect they were not superhuman. They were human being like all of us. They felt afraid of the armies and the battles. They felt, you know, they're going to lose money. They're going to lose frame. They're going to lose... All this thought came to their mind. But they immediately conquered that feeling and submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, so some of... some. Yeah, some teaching and some dry books and some lectures expect us to be superhuman, you know? And they, they, they split a line in the middle. If you don't look like this, you're not good. It's not the look, you know? It's not the look. It's not the, 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 the culture. It is something in the heart. It is submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because it's in the heart, it's not up to any human being to judge. Yeah, it's in the heart. You don't know. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in the heart. So this is the story of Ka'b. Yeah, we started Ka'b ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. He is one of the best of the best of Ansar. It's just, you can't get any better than this. And in the old days, he was the one who do poetry. And doing poetry is like the whole media. The Arab had nothing else to publish what they want except poetry. Ka'b was one of them. And the, in the front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet used to tell him, yes, you start, do the poetry, and he will do the poetry, praising Allah, praising Islam, praising the Muslim. So it's just a huge figure. And obviously the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loved him so much. In the battle of Tabuk, actually there was no battle. See, this is also the, the amazing thing. No battle happened, nothing happened. But when you tell them, we're going to face the Roman, and they knew last year the Roman brought 200,000, 100,000 from the Arab and 100,000 from the other countries to go and annihilate those Muslims that they can you know, never think about it again. So the Muslims still have this memory. They know what happened last year. Khalid ibn al-Walid, we know. Yeah? Khalid ibn was the one who saved the army and came back. And the Muslim, alhamdulillah, did not lose. They lost 14. Can you imagine this one? They lost 14 person. A huge victory for the 3,000 Muslim, if you can think about it. So the Muslim already know it's very difficult. They're going to face the Roman now. And this is the second time going. It means it's, it's going to be even double hard. It is in August, which is so hot, you can't even go for, you know, out to, for a walk. It's 1,000 kilometers away. It's a whole month to get there and back. So if, if your family, your wife, your daughter, your son, your mom, your dad is dying, there's no way you're going to come and look after this. So there's so many. It is the season for, you know, the crops, the farms now to get the food and sell and get the, the whole year supply. They were farmer, yeah? Agricultural societies. Only recently we had salaries. <laughs> there were no salaries 100 years ago. Yeah, for the workers. This is a new system that we don't even know how much blessed we are. That we just, the whole month, the whole month, our fathers, our forefathers did not even a whole week if they're working like us. So there's so many reasons for them to think twice. And one of them thought twice, actually a few of them, Ka'b ibn Malik radiallahu is mentioned in the Quran, Surah At-Tawbah, Surah number nine. Allah mentioned his stories. He says, I'm young, I'm strong, I'm rich, I got everything, I will join. I will join them later. And that's all of us the same. Inshallah, when I retire, I'll memorize the Quran.
When I have time, I will read some surah. When I do this, I will go for hajj. <coughs> That's what we all do every day, procrastinating. But when the Prophet ﷺ is telling you, go out and you procrastinate, that is a major sin. That's a major sin. It's only Allah that decides. Is it disbelief or belief? You know, because it can be a disbelief. If you say to the Prophet, no, I'm, I'm not going to come. The Prophet ﷺ went to the book, a thousand kilometers. And in a way, this is this going from Medina to Jordan. Nowadays you fly <laughs> and it takes, it's exhausting. Imagine this journey. And the Prophet ﷺ in the way, he looks in the desert and he finds some shadow. The army is moving. And in the desert you can, yeah, maybe a camel, maybe a loner, yeah? And the Prophet ﷺ says, that's Abu Dhar. <laughs> Subhanallah. What is this? In the, you know, it's impossible to know who is this. It's no way you know it's a animals or a camel, just a wind or, or just a, you know. And he says, Kun Abu Dhar. And two days later, it was Abu Dhar, radiallahu anhu, walking. Why? His camel died. He's traveling with the army and it's, you know, it's normal. It's like a car started to break down, started to have a problem, you start to fix it. The camel, you know, you don't put oil and stuff. You have to give them some medicine, give them some break, get them rest. But the camels got worse and worse and worse and couldn't even move any further and had to die. Wallahi, there's no second thought in my mind. If that is me, Allah knows I tried my very best. You know, Abu Dhar carry his stuff and follow the army walking, walking in the sand by himself, by himself because he can't keep up. And the Prophet see in the distance and then he, two days later he catches up with them and they said to him, what happened? He told them the story. And the Prophet وسلم, he can imagine how much he impressed he was, how much moved he was. He raises his hand and he makes so much dua and he says, Rahim Allah Abu Dhar. Oh Allah, have mercy on Abu Dhar. He is traveling by himself. You know, joining the army, joining a going to a battlefield, walking like this by himself. He's going to die by himself and he's going to brought in Akhra by himself. Just as unique person walking on the stage to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here is Abu Dhar al-Ghafari radiallahu anhu. So amazing stories of our forefathers, the Sahaba, the early Muslim. <coughs> with their dedication to Islam, with their love for Allah. And that's what we're asking for ourselves. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill our heart with love for the deen, love for Allah and his messenger, love for each other. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us reason for happiness for each other. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us. We ask Allah to forgive us. We ask Allah to increase us in prosperity and happiness and success in this life and the next. We continue inshallah tomorrow with the story.